Welcome back. And we're here with DDR, the former commander of the Israel Navy and uh, chief executive of Rafael Industries. Didi, welcome. Hi. So, uh, 70 years to Israel's independence, you were born here on a kibbutz uh, one year before the founding of the state. Looking back, uh, what makes you so proud or proudest to be an Israeli? I don't know how, how proud I am as much as I'm happy to be Israeli. Uh, I'm happy to, to be born into this uh, exciting juncture of the Jewish history. Mm -hmm. And uh, to have the chance to uh, participate in this uh, unbelievable effort to rebuild the nation uh, and contribute modestly uh, to uh, those parts. Let's focus on the defense industry, which you know so well from different vantage points as a user and as a provider. And looking back, uh, after the French embargo of 67, Israel really didn't have a choice to develop uh, this industry. In, in fact, uh, should Charles de Gaulle be thanked uh, for the industry that's so successful today? Uh, you may, uh, but, but I, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, mm -hmm. We would, would have uh, had to, uh, to develop our own capabilities anyway. Uh, you cannot count on, uh, on anybody uh, right. to give you whatever you need for your, uh, for your security. And uh, we had the potential. Uh, Tremendous potential in terms of manpower, talented people. Right. Uh, and on a shoestring budget, a relative. Yeah. Uh, yes, but uh, but still uh, there was enough uh, to create the, the the basis for a thriving uh, industry. So tell us the importance of defense exports and how Israel needs to uh, sell 70, 80 percent of its capacity in order to support the IDF and to sustain its industrial base, right? It, yeah, it, it's very much so. Um, whatever, we, the main mission is to supply the IDF mm -hmm. with the best, uh, the best systems that, that one can engineer. Uh, and those are uh, very expensive uh, uh, tasks anyway. So the way to, uh, to finance it is basically to export. Right. But then you have to export uh, uh, those things that uh, it's safe enough to export. And so often uh, countries are receiving top line weaponry before the IDF. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that, so, that far. Uh, in fact, uh, we sell uh, today mm -hmm. what we have developed yesterday to, uh, to uh, develop tomorrow. Okay. So they may get it slightly later, but they get the next generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which uh, allows Israel to develop the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a trick. So let's talk about the added value of Israeli developed systems. It used to be that uh, combat proven was a big uh, selling point. But now with these generational wars going on in Iraq, Afghanistan and other points of the globe, where does Israel have its edge on the world market? I think, uh, I think the, the key here is that we learned uh, to, uh, to confront the uh, the strong gravitational forces of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot argue with experience, right? It's right. combat proven. Right. Especially when uh, your claim is basically, the, the test bench of your claim is, is in the future. But still, if you're uh, courageous enough to take the chance, then you can really pull the entire wagon forward in ways that eventually make uh, the transformation from the new generation to the old one right. possible. That's, that's a tough, tough issue. Uh, it, it's, it's an uphill, uphill battle. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, uh, you go for, uh, for, uh, for the clan of experienced, experienced people who actually went through wars and you say, hey guys, 
it may be irrelevant any longer. We need the new ways of doing business here. Well, that symbiotic, uh, synergistic relationship between yeah. the industry and the user. Tell us about that, which doesn't seem to be prevalent in uh, other countries. It's not. It's not. It, it, I can give you Rafael as an example. Mm -hmm. We had something like two squadrons of uh, fighter pilot uh, as engineers in Rafael, still do, you know? So they fly Sunday in reserve. And Monday, they come uh, back to the, to the uh, drawing table and say, hey, I saw this, and we have to do something about this. So the, the time window between a problem discovered and uh, a bunch of guys already working on some solutions, the time window here is shorter than anywhere else. Absolutely. And, and this is probably one of the greatest advantages of the Israeli industry. And under your tenure at uh, Rafael, sometimes you even start programs with a, a handshake or a word. You don't even have a signed contract. I'm thinking about the, the trophy, for example, that protects uh, tanks and ground vehicles. Yes. Uh, Can you imagine Lockheed getting into a handshake deal with the Pentagon? One of the, the strangely enough, uh, one of the advantages of being a government-owned company is that you can really take risks and plan for the long term. And okay, so this year we won't make that much of money, you know, mm -hmm. but we'll spend it more on R&D. Right. So down the road, the advantages and the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the uh, s success rate of leading uh, the, the entire defense industry worldwide uh, is, is much higher this way than uh, with a private company or whatever, uh, right. a public company that, that has to show uh, every quarter uh, revenue, line. profits, and so on Appease and so forth. Appease uh, the shareholders. Now, um, it's nonsense. Despite this innovation and the technical, technological edge that uh, you've cited, uh, can Israel ever be truly self-sufficient? I mean, you need uh, enormous funding assistance from the United States and international partners, right? Yeah. Uh, the major platforms uh, will have to be produced by someone else. Right. Uh, the rest of the system uh, mostly will come from Israeli industry, as far as I can see down the road. Uh, that will always be the uh, uh, major requirement, that, that we keep our own edge uh, at, at any cost. Mm -hmm. So yes, we'll have to have partners, we'll have to have uh, uh, joint ventures with uh, many countries. That's a future trend. Uh, Didi, I have to close on a more um, uh, uh, sensitive note. Okay. We've talked about the richness and the, uh, the source of pride that it gives you to be an Israeli, but I'm wondering at age 70, what gives you more concern? The external threats uh, against Israel or these uh, huge uh, dilemmas within the Israeli society that could threaten national unity? The second one, definitely, is, uh, is more problematic. Uh, but this is still one nation, you know, with everything that, that with all the difficulties and the, uh, uh, you know, the arguments uh, and the tensions, this is still one nation. And uh, I strongly believe that uh, whatever, whatever we go through, eventually, uh, I believe in the, in the Zionist idea and in the future of, of the State of Israel, absolutely. On that bright note, Didi Ari, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.